Hey guys, I have a great treat for you today. You'll learn about some deep level personal growth stuff from renowned neuroscientist Dr. Dario Nardi. We'll speak about entering into the unconscious and digging up the treasure within the unconscious for our own personal transformation. This is some really cool Jungian stuff. This is a knowledge that modern society does not have as much access to, but old tribal communities did. How can we facilitate the treasures within the unconscious and bring it outward? You'll learn about it all here with Dr. Dario Nardi. Come check out his book in which he goes into this more in depth. And we begin this interview by talking about how money and privilege can get in the way of inner transformation. Like one thing I have in the book towards the beginning is this like reality check. Like how are you actually doing in reality in like yeah. eight different areas? And, you know, like not just material success, but like your physical health and these different things. And I realized when I wrote that, that like money can actually compensate for like a lot of it. And you take away money or privilege or something like that. And then let's see how the person really fares. And even more so, there are so many relationships which serve the purpose of like psychologically of balancing. So that there, there's stuff that the person is not dealing with and they're not growing because their partner is covering for them. And I don't want to say codependent because it's not quite as deep as that. But it's a psychological dynamic where both people are inhibiting each other from actually doing the growth that they need to do. That's interesting. You know, it's very interesting in earlier societies, which were much smaller, you know, at the tribal level is what I'm talking about, where everybody knew everybody else. And there often was a medicine woman or medicine man, and there were processes in place that would allow people, not just for things like rites of passage, but to engage in inner confrontation and healing. And a great example would be Native American sweat lodge. Hmm. And, and the person having to go through this very difficult, let's say like physiological or biomechanical experience, which, which I, I think so many modern people miss on, like they, they really downplay how important like a physical like experience is like how much that can actually change the nervous system and and therefore release us from stuff or have us face stuff and so there there was like these built-in processes but now you know it, there there are built-in things like going to a psychologist or taking a pill or something like that but a lot of those even even in psychology the average person I don't know what the number is today, but I know 25 years ago when I heard it, the average person goes to a therapist like 1.2 times. You know, it's like they go once, they get us, they do get a benefit, like they don't run away from it, but they're like, oh, okay, you gave me the boost that I needed. And of course, the, the pills are very much that way, like antidepressants. Um, and so the, it really keeps people sustained in the space, which ironically, it's like saying we're never going to have winter. Right. And we're never going to have autumn. And it's like, no, we need those seasons. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Um, so in, in modern society, what, what makes it different from, in, you're talking about these uh, earlier, earlier communities, is that um, they have these mechanisms in place. They could be rituals or other means that could help us to facilitate the psychological transformation process. Mm -hmm. right. and, and very much Jung believed that you know, the, the purpose was not to live in the light, uh, that that's not possible. We're human beings. We have animal part of us. Uh, we have things like pride and anger and pain and all that built in to the human experience. The, the task is to, to allow what is in the darkness to come out and to bring light to it, um, to, to illuminate the darkness. And... The, these things which we might denigrate, some people might denigrate today, like, oh, what is the point of ritual, for example? Like, oh, this just stupid, like, repetition from the past. You know, it's, it's superstition. And, and yet our brains are actually very superstitious. 
And we can use ritual as a way to create a container. And in that container, we can open a window from the unconscious. Mm -hmm. And Jung proposed a process like active imagination. I, I think that there are other techniques which are more potent, mm -hmm. but it's, it's still fine for some people. That's what they need. Um, that open that window and allow the stuff to come out mm -hmm. in a way that we can deal with. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, right now it's like, I believe the society is so, I mean, there are multiple reasons why particularly American society is so dysfunctional and exporting that dysfunction to the rest of the world. Mm. Um, but it doesn't allow people the space to bring out the unconscious, except in an unconscious way in the social sphere. Yeah. What, what do you mean by that? Um, like it's like how many issues play out and like we've been seeing for the past six months in terms of like rioting, um, uh, you know, there, I mean, there's a whole spectrum of it. There are protesters, rioters, and looters, which are actually three different things. And, and there are underlying issues, but there, there's not really a framework to allow those to come out except in a very controlled way. Mm. Or, or conversely, completely uncontrolled. Mm. Instead of saying, let's enter a container where we're going to surrender our, our like, reins of power in order to allow the process to reveal something to us that we all need to see and to work through. Mm. You know, the politicians never want to release reins of power. Corporations don't want to release reins of power. That's terrifying to them. Mm. Um, so how it comes out is it comes out in uncontrolled ways. And, and uh, you know, I, I just feel like I'm using something that's at the time. In Jung's time, especially in the 1930s, it was about the, the slow rise of Nazism as people started observing it and then it became more and more and so on over the course of a decade, more than that really actually over 20 years. Um, and, and uh, you know, there, there's... There, there's no like healing processes in our society that, that are not individual, that are free of, of like the needs of people to have like maintain power. Hmm. And, and that's where I feel like, where, whereas in a traditional like tribal society, yes, you would have politics like you have today. Like there are always the human psychology is there. I, I believe that. But on the other hand, there were some places that were, quote, sacred, like truly actually sacred. And the sacred meaning, not in a superstitious sense, but the saying in a sense that this is a space where we are all, we, plural, all of us are willing to surrender to the process. Wow, well, yeah. And, but, and we don't have that right now. And, and, that's, um, and I think that's why so many people are disillusioned with religion. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, mainstream religion, because it lost its, capacity for whatever reason reasons to enroll people if i read the lives of the early saints and the early catholic church in the first 300 years very very different than the last 300 years mm. like profoundly different in terms of one that was originally very mystical was very taking people through a process um and, and you know it, it's I mean, this is, it gets on a whole tangent, but it's very much why I would say, you know, some people say like, oh, Jung was very mystical or not scientific or whatever. And Jung actually was aware of those criticisms and said, no, it's not true at all. I actually take psychology incredibly seriously. Mm. And that's why I bring up these issues. And yeah. I believe it's the same. I don't see healing at a, an individual very much or a certain community level unless people are willing to go through a process together. That makes sense. I, I hear what you say because um, what Jung says, we need a balance of the conscious and the unconscious. And right now we're afraid of losing conscious control. And we think, oh, we could control everything and make, um, make everything better, but actually we need that unconscious side and, uh, and to allow. And really he was standing, be he's not against the conscious, he, he's making, He's operating from the standpoint of art and science working together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and really saw this, this uh, I mean, and he was the person in his word association test that established scientifically, to, which has carried us to this point today throughout all of psychological science where they're like, oh, of course there's an unconscious. 
like that i mean that that's just accepted and understood their unconscious processes and and all of that and it's um you know i i'm reminded at the times that i've been to ayahuasca ceremonies and where people submit themselves to a psychedelic which is loving and relentless and there are certain people and i see them come in and i'm like oh yeah they're going to have a difficult time um because that 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 letting go of the ego structure of you know, being friends with the unconscious in a way and trusting that is going to be really, really challenging. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are other people who like, you know, do amazingly well. I, I've seen ENFJs be absolutely like floored and, and I don't want to say crushed, but like really like seriously dealt with. And then I've seen ESTPs like get amazing benefits and like not resist it at all. Mm. And, and, and emerge from the other side, you know, they both may have emerged in the same place in the other side, but I think some of it is like, there are these fundamentals that have nothing to do directly with type. Right.